But the Great Pyramid is an amazing structure, by far the largest building on the planet today. Still, largest building in the world, uh, built bigger than anything ever built by man since. Some people think the Isaiah 19:19 19, 19 passage is referring to the pyramid. It says, "In that day there shall be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a border, a pillar at the border thereof." And it shall be for a sign and a witness. There are quite a few folks who think that the pyramid is this. This is it, because that there's the teaching goes that Egypt split into two kingdoms, northern and southern kingdom, and they were fighting and you know, civil war kind of stuff. And this pyramid is right on the border. And then when they united, it's now in the midst thereof. So it is both at the border and in the midst. Otherwise, how could a building be that way? Now, of course, the Jehovah's Witnesses have gone crazy with the pyramid. There are all kinds of books by Jehovah's Witnesses thinking, oh, this prophesies everything and proves Jehovah's Witnesses are right, you know. And they, they kind of take it to real wild extremes. And there are many books available on the pyramid, some of which are absolutely loony. But it's very interesting reading. The pyramid is a huge building. The, it goes up four sides to the, stop, to the top, and the top stone was never installed. If you look at the diagram here, there's only one door into the pyramid. Nobody could find the door until 800 A.D. That pyramid sat there for thousands of years, and nobody could find their way in. Finally, in 800 A.D., some Arabs got a hammer and chisel and just started pounding a hole, chiseled their way into the pyramid. They chiseled and chiseled and for months, and the guy kept telling his workers, oh, there's going to be lots of gold in here, you're all going to be rich, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, finally, after months and months of chiseling, everybody's getting tired of going and, you know, digging a hole in the rock, okay, because it was solid rock. Finally, they were close to giving up, and they heard a noise of a rock falling. And he said, oh, it came from over that way. Let's chisel there. They chiseled over, and they hit one of the passages in the middle, and then had to work their way backwards to find the door. Had they known where it was, they could have walked up and just pushed it right open. But nobody could find this door for centuries. Well, once they found the pyramid and mapped it out, you see it's got an entrance where the A is. The entrance, only one entrance in, it immediately takes you on the broad road down to the pit, letter C. Or you can take a choice to make a turn and go up uh, channel E there, up the narrow road that goes to the king's chamber. So your choice is the broad way that leads to the pit or the narrow way that leads to the king's chamber. Now that'll preach. It sounds like there's a little gospel in there somewhere, right? If you get to the king's chamber, you find yourself in an empty tomb where nobody ever rotted, no bodies de decomposed in there, and it's on the 50th row of stones. What's that all mean? I don't know. There's a grand gallery that some people think has marks along the way that in those marks, if they go by pyramid inches, which is a little bigger than our inch, the pyramid inch, they say you, each one marks a year, and they, they say on this grand gallery that it's got marked off where World War I is, World War II, major events through world history are supposedly marked off in the grand gallery. That's some of the stuff you read in these books when you read about the pyramid. It's the largest building by far. It contains enough stone to build a 10-foot high brick wall all the way around Texas or France. They're about the same size. 10-foot high brick wall around Texas. The top of the pyramid is 455 feet high. The, the 50th row of stones, which is interesting, the 50th year of Jubilee, the 50th row of stones is where the king's chamber is. And those who teach that the pyramid has Christian symbolism, of course, will jump on this type of thing, the broad way, the narrow way, you know, the king's chamber, etc. Um, or you go down to the pit. In the king's chamber is an empty tomb. I was told, I didn't check it out, maybe, I'm not, maybe it's not correct, but it has the same volume, this empty tomb, as the Ark of the Covenant. You take the length times the width times the height, it equals the volume of the Ark of the Covenant. Maybe somebody can check it out, let me know if that's correct. But originally, the pyramid was covered by 144,000 smooth, polished casing stones. Each one weighed about, I believe they said 10 tons were the casing stones. They fit together so tightly, in many cases you couldn't even find the seam. And in all cases, I was told, you can't even get a piece of paper between them. These, imagine a 10-ton stone fitting together with the next one so tightly you can't even get paper between it. No mortar. I mean, today we build brick walls and put mortar in there, and you can look at the brick on the house here, and some of them are straight and some of them are not too straight. You know, the brick layers get in a little bit of a hurry. These stones are massive, and they didn't even use mortar, and they fit together flawlessly. And the top stone was never in installed. And those who teach it's a Christian building or Christian principles in there say 144,000, uh -huh, Revelation chapter 7. 144,000. Bible talks about the whole body fitly joined together. 
And they'll say, see, this is evidence that it's a has some Christian symbolism. And maybe it does. I don't know. Right? Ephesians chapter 4, the whole body fitly joined together. Matthew 21 talks about the stone that the builders rejected. Now, the Great Pyramid never did have a chief cornerstone. Imagine the largest, neatest building on the planet, no cornerstone. Why would they stop one rock short? Why didn't they finish the job? Well, I don't know. There are a couple theories about that. But in Mark 12, it talks about the scripture. Scripture says, the stone that the builders rejected. Luke 20, the stone that the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. This is obviously referring to Jesus Christ. In Daniel, it tells about the stone that was cut out of the mountain without hands and smote the image on the feet in the book of Daniel. Could this stone be Jesus Christ, who's going to make his own kingdom on the world? Revelation 21 talks about the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. There are those who teach that the new Jerusalem, the city, and the Bible tells us the great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven, will be clear as crystal, four square, and 12,000 furlongs. That's 1,379 miles. So there's going to be a city in Revelation 21 that is 1,300 or 1,400 miles by 1,400 miles by 1,400 miles. And everybody assumes it's going to be a cube. Maybe so. I don't know. But maybe it's a pyramid. Because that's a structure that could also have those dimensions, and it would lie four square. And if it's a pyramid, pyramids only have one cornerstone right on top, whereas other buildings would have four. So there are those who teach that the Great Pyramid is going, the, the New Jerusalem is going to be in the shape of a Great Pyramid, and Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone, and He is the light of the world. And if the whole thing's clear as crystal, then the light just kind of uh, translucent; the light goes right through. So he is the light thereof. The first uh, 13 verses in the Bible starts off with this, the world has light, but it has no sun. The last 26 verses of the Bible, the world has light, but it has no sun. He is the light thereof. And so maybe the pyramid is symbolic of that. I don't know. Hutchins got a good book on that if you want to read it. And of course, if the, any of this is true, it's obvious Satan would use this as a, you know, pervert it for his use. And the great pyramid on the back of your dollar bill is a Masonic lodge symbol which has 13 rows of stones representing the 13 degrees in the Blue Lodge. The chief cornerstone is not yet in place, and many people say this represents Lucifer, and he's going to come down and establish his kingdom, when actually you know, God's going to establish his kingdom toward the end. But which one's right? I don't know. I kind of lead toward number one, but I wouldn't be dogmatic. The Bible isn't clear.